Hey Bat fans, Luke here, ready to bat chat about the latest installment of Batman, and that is issue number 82. Uh, I think we are three issues away uh, after this uh, to complete the Tom King run on Batman before uh, James Tynan jumps on board uh, to take that up to issue number 100, and then after that, we'll have to wait and see. A whole lot of stuff kind of rooming around DC right now. That um, only thing I can say, just kind of see how it plays out. Because right now, um, I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, uh, Batman 82. Uh, in front of you, you have the two covers, as always. I actually start uh, right now with the variant. This is uh, Travis uh, Charest. I don't know if I'm saying the individual's uh, name right. Not too familiar with the artist, to be perfectly honest. At least off the top of my head. I like the design. Um, simple, uh, going up against, you know, obviously this is a, a building, um, out in Gotham, whatever the case may be, a uh, very striking image, uh, pretty good. Um, then you have the main cover, uh, they did some here a little different, this is the Dave Finch, uh, main cover here. For this month, what they did, uh, they have these acetate covers, and it's actually pretty cool, so you sit there, you got the main cover, um, was the only one they didn't do that for the variant and then what they do is they have this little acetate cover over it so when you're looking at it at face value this is what you think is the cover but when you move it behind you actually get a second image of a cover which kind of shows something a little bit differently uh thomas wing you know being the puppet master uh, behind bane which does come into play with the story um Quick thing on the cover. Um, these are these cardstock variants. They charge $4.99 for this one. And then this acetate one, it's only $3.99. So uh, they didn't jack up the price for what I think might be a little more better quality cover. Um, at least in this instance. Uh, I see, I mean, I think I got pretty much all the books I got. I got the acetate cover um, for DC with the exception of the variants I'm getting, which are, you know, action and... Justice League Dark, so I've seen the Justice League one, that one looks pretty cool. Uh, the Harley Quinn one, that looks pretty cool. I can't remember where the book came out this month I had that I pulled that I got it, but either way, it's cool. But the only thing that's kind of weird is again, $3.99, $4.99. Now, I remember back in uh, New 52. Uh, Batman and Detective for the longest time had that real nice cardstock cover. And I would not mind paying just a little bit more money. Maybe not a whole other dollar's worth. But paying a little bit more money to get those cardstock covers. Because beyond this one, this is the acetate. Um, DC's covers, uh, they're like just one step above Marvel's. I think the real flimsy paper, which if you're not careful, the ink will rub, rub off on your fingers. So it's a tangent. But either way... Um, Interesting job of the covers. I just kind of wish DC would go back, at least with the main run titles, the main ones. Give us the card stock. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'll be willing to pay, you know, four fifty. Um, then maybe have your alter the variant covers. You can mark out the four ninety nine, whatever the case may be. But I don't know. I just like the quality covers. But this one was pretty cool. It's a gimmick. It is what it is. So anyway. Um, so yeah, we have Dave Finch on the cover here, but in the interior, um, it's all Mikel Yanin. And this one's a little weird. Um, for a lot of it, you get the Mikel Yanin uh, art, but you get panels like this, I swear. It just it just doesn't seem like Yanin as much as it would uh, Matt Wagner. Um, if you have any doubt what I'm talking about, um, the Monster Man and... Also, look at his Trinity run. It just looks very Matt Wagner-ish. And that's not that there's anything wrong with it. It's good. Uh, but, um, yeah, just it's a couple of these panels. It just looks like Yanin's touch just wasn't as consistent. And not bad, but here or there. So the art was good. Colors within. I can't remember if Jordi Belair did the colors on this one. Or not. Uh, yeah, Jordi Belair. She's been pretty much a consistent with a couple issues here and there. Not doing the colors, but uh, this issue. So we have King writing, Yanni on art with Belair 
doing colors. And what this issue is, is nothing more really than a big fight between Bane, uh, Batman, and Catwoman. Which we'll get into that in a little bit. In the periphery, there's you know, Flashpoint Batman. Uh, which we'll get into that in a minute as well. But but basically what this is, it's kind of like an agreement. Hey, Batman saying, you know what? Hey, mono, mono, no. No back gadgets. You know Venom. Just me, you, no help. Throw down, you know, for you know the sake of Gotham. And originally... Batman says to Bane, hey, Catwoman, she's not involved in this. It's just me and you, you know, mano a mano. Take off the shirts, a la, you know, Raj al Ghul versus Batman back in the day. Um, and just have at it. And ultimately what you see here is uh, Batman does kind of do the okie doke. Kind of like says all these things and has his fingers crossed behind his back. Uh, sort of figuratively where he has Batarangs in the back taped. And then Catwoman does get involved. And it's basically the ultimate, you know, psych type thing. Um, he says, yeah, I lied. Uh, so now it's going to be Catwoman in Batman uh, with some bad ranks versus a de-venomized um, Bane. And what you find out is that actually the bad ranks that, that Batman actually uses in his fights is laced with uh, the super venom that Gotham Girl uses. And we find out through the dialogue in this is that basically that super venom, that it would be too much for Bane's system to take. And this will also be the way that they're going to defeat Bane. Um, but in order to do that, they got to make sure that you know, venom, his actual venom, is not ready in the system. In the system. So that's the whole duke behind it. Hey, take out Bat uh, Bane, use these batarangs laced with this super venom but in order to do that we gotta get him to you know voluntarily take off the venom and how that kind of all played out a little cliche here and there but ultimately it is what it is so this really is a lot of action in this issue with something in the background that has basically thomas wayne kind of reintroducing himself in this story and this brings me to what i think is some of the faults in this issue while i do like i mean it's a good action uh action uh issue and you do see some callbacks this is nice uh you hear you know the type of thing remember back way back um uh god which one was that i think it might have been i am bane where he's batman at the very end is kind of saying hey everyone thinking gonna take me down but you know what i'm still here it, you get the same type of fault callback and Batman uh, confronting Bane and he's basically saying the same type of thing, you know, back when I was young and I was in the, you know, Santa Prisca in the prison, uh, they would sit there and drown me every day and all these creatures would come up and they would bite at me. And But you know what? I'm still here. So it's nice to kind of come sort of full circle with that concept. Uh, now it's on the other side, Bane saying it instead of Batman and the ultimate kind of callback is that when looks like Bane is getting ready to uh, be taken down, uh, Batman obviously could take it one step further and just permanently take him out. But he's like, you know what? Um, but death will only end your agony, silence your pain, and said, I will simply, you know, break your damn back. Obviously, callback uh, back to Nightfall. And additionally, uh, something you've seen in the I Am Suicide uh, story arc. Where Bane breaks his back again and puts uh, Batman in the prison. Uh, so you get some callbacks, but this kind of goes back one of the things where I really cr critique Tom King's writing before I get into the Thomas Wayne one, because that one's still a uh, little. So if I remember correctly, issue number 81, we ended off on the cliffhanger that basically Damian Wayne was upside down and Thomas Wayne uh, was, you know, at the point where, hey, I got to sit there and shoot Damien because, you know, Batman infiltrated the city, ignored the warning, Bane gave the order. But then we pick up issue number 82 and it's right now head to head, Batman and Bane getting ready to face off. But he, here's my, my gripe with that. This goes back to uh, potentially because you've seen some other thing other things 
instances like this throughout King's Run before as well. But man, does he skip time a lot and expect you to kind of just kind of fill in the blanks, which I got that. Um, there'd be some, the reader should be able to connect the dots without being, you know, have their hand held throughout the process. But there are some things I, I would really love to see how number one, that cliffhanger ended. <laughs> and then number two, how did Batman really get to the point where he's head to head with Bane? Because that would have been one part of a story where you're kind of building up the crescendo, you know, the head to head between Bane and Batman. And it's just kind of goes back how we started with the city of Bane to begin with. Which is where I opened up that first panel and just said, you know, later. Tom King does that a lot where it's just the details. Just, eh, whatever. We're just going to just jump time. Move it along a little bit. Well, number one, this goes back to one of the things I've been saying a couple times throughout the videos. But I've been thinking it internally a lot. This is the price we're paying for that nightmare grind where the story just kind of came to a halt. And if this is... The price we're paying, and now we're three issues away after this to kind of get the city, the story moving along. Where we got, we can't really focus on you know the plot as much because we got to speed it up along. Um, man, that's BS. Um, I'm not a fan of that, and I got it. You know, DC got to be able to you know take care of the creators and things of that nature. And yes, the writer should ultimately, you know, be able to do other things and as long as in the confines of their contract, I get that. But man, if we're going to sit there and we're going to suffer because of this, because he wanted to go off and do something else. That's why nightmares kind of just stuck in a rut for, that was a good couple months. And this is the side effect for that. Man, that's not cool <laughs> to be perfectly honest. And we just go one heck of a jump. Without any development between the last issue, 81, and to now, and I really loved, would have loved to have seen that crescendo, you know, that, that led up to the head-to-head -to -head of uh, Batman getting ready to confront Bane. Um, not, not saying he needs to take out all these, you know, the other villains of Gotham, but really from Bane's perspective, knowing Batman's coming, and then all we get is, he's here. Take out, you know, the little runt. And that's... That's a huge missed opportunity. Also, I'm going to say it again. And man, oh man. Number one, um, I would have loved to see how this all happened. Uh, the destruction of the Batcave. Um, another thing, I got to go back. I, I can't really remember. But there's a there's a panel here. Thomas Wayne's walking past everyone. Cassandra came. Did she have the old Batgirl suit on? Or does she kind of have like the, you know, Batman and Robin Eternal-ish type of thing we're even seeing in the Outsiders? I, I don't remember if Orphan is wearing this. I can't remember. I don't know. I have to go back to that. But, I mean, I get why all these, the members of Bat Family are down. Because basically it's a fight, whatever. But, boy, I don't know. They really need to explain why he's here. <laughs> I'm sorry. If it's Skeets, that's BS. Flashpoint Universe was ultimately wiped out the button, and he's still here. How? And if it's Skeets, boy, I would really love to hear an explanation and see how that was kind of crafted. Because right now, we're not getting it. And it just seems like a whole big dingleberry floating out there that... I don't know. Another thing I'm a little worried... Is that back in that, um, the story arc before, um, Betraying the Fallen or the Kid, I can't remember the exact name of the story arc. Um, that pit they were talking about, that just feels like it's a huge contrivance just waiting to be used. Um, you know, the one that you can take and then basically resurrect. It's not, it's like a Lazarus pit, but a little bit more different. They're actually going to, Thomas is trying to take Martha. There to bring her back to life. Um, if that's kind of like our segue into Alfred, get him in a minute. Man, I just felt like really cheesy, to be perfectly frank. And also, Bane, maybe to the end, if you remember. I'm, I'm not going to spoil the ending on this. There is a double cross. Um, maybe if you look at a triple cross between Thomas Wayne, uh, Batman, and, and Bane at the end. That serves as the cliffhanger going into issue number 83. But... I'm just a little worried that that 
that Pitt was just there mentioned and have that some potential impact and not kind of revisit it makes me a little worried. So, A, Thomas Wayne Batman. How is he here? <laughs> and I would love some detail, but that goes back to the thing that's, to me, the ultimate critique of King's Run. And I'm not going to go too far in the negative route because, I mean, heaven for Betsy, you can go other channels on YouTube and get that fix. But just for me, other than some glaring, you know, character fallacies that just people just not doing what Batman or other characters would just normally do, he just glances over some parts in the plot where I would think, I said this before, I use the comparison where, I mean, Scott Snyder's run, I loved it, but I can see the critique with him. Sometimes he gets mucked down into the details and you just kind of wish, okay, I don't need this much detail, this much words, just kind of get the move the plot to move along a little bit while on the far end the opposite effect now we have Tom King we're like dude I would love to have some explanation into development in this plot to explain how we got there and there's really like no medium between the two in this so this is like the far other side of him just kind of moving the story along with some eh you got it like, no I don't got it I would love to hear some explanation and some development into the characters and their motivations why they're doing what they're doing and how did they get there and to me I just well, I just open up page one and I'm like man this is how did we get here what happened from the last one I would lo really love to know especially since another thing you bring out I mean Thomas Wayne having Damien their dead rights and it's like Man, that would be a cool thing to kind of deal, dive, uh, dive deeper into, but neither here nor there. Um, but yeah, that, that's a relatively simple issue, which I liked it. I'm not too much a Debbie Downer on the whole thing where Batman lied type of thing that I hear some people critiquing about. Hey, it is what it is. Um, you're basically dealing with Venom, uh, Venomized Bane. I mean... Batman's really not doing anything that kind of puts him on that same type of level. So to get the edge sometimes, okay, got it. Um, not really too down on that per se. But I like the art for the most part. Uh, Catwoman, yeah, she says some cringy things in here. Okay, whatever. Um, not really her city, but she claims because hell in her book, she's not even really in Gotham. We won't go there. Um, I like the Catwoman title. It's just... Man, it just doesn't really move along very much. But like the art, like the color, with a couple page panels here and there again, Janine's art just feels like uh, he just loses some of his original polish, which kind of looks like someone else might be doing, like like I said, the Wagner effect, which isn't bad. Uh, but all in all, um, a decent issue. Um, yeah, it was kind of good there. Um, yeah, I'm not going to give you ruin the ending on here. Um uh, a decent issue, but missing some details that really would have kind of put this over the edge. Um, I'll give this a 2.5 out of 5. And if some things were flushed out in the, in the plot and to kind of develop a little bit how we got here, this might have been a 3 out of 5. Um, a lot of callbacks, things of that nature. Setting things up, but we got three issues left. And we got some hanging turds floating out there that need one. And that's, I'm just a little worried that we're going to not get everything flushed out as much as we think with only three issues left. So 2.5 out of 5. Uh, with potential, maybe go up to three if things were flushed out a little bit. Um, but yeah, not bad. Average. So anyway, uh, that's my thoughts on uh, Batman issue number 82. Hit me up in the comments below. I know I rambled off a little bit here and there. Um, to be honest, what I'm trying to do is not make this so damn negative. It's hard. Man, it's hard, especially when you read things like angle number four. And you read that, and then you read this. It's just like, man, that's the same writer. Ugh. That's the thing. Try to keep it as much positive as I can. But, you know... Call, call a spade a spade at the same time. But anyway, hit me up, comments below. We'll bat chat about Batman number uh, 82 and go from there. Uh, next video, I picked up some old Batman trades past couple days. 
filling in my hole in my timeline. So um, there's one um, Frank Terry book I kind of want to talk about because it's pretty cool. Um, played on a little bit of nostalgia in me a little bit. So we'll see next day or two. But until then, take care.